a probabilistic. And this debate uh, was originated uh, in the beginning of the 20th century, the 1920s, uh, with the invention of quantum mechanics. Okay, so, this, uh, so quickly, uh, quantum mechanics is the idea that, well, if you take a fundamental object of, the, of nature, like an electron, well, from our scale, you, it looks like a point, but when you zoom in, it no longer looks like a point. It's not a point-like object. It feels on space, kind of like a wave. So quantum mechanics says that the fundamental object of nature are actually kind of like waves. And, there are, and it also describes the dynamic of these objects, which is known uh, as the Schrodinger equation, which is a very deterministic, rather simple-looking equation. Not that simple. Okay? And now, the weird thing is that when people were trying to observe these wave functions, the wave function seems to change when you look at it. When you looked at it, it, it suddenly changed. It's called the collapse of the wave function. And the very weird thing is that if you looked at it once again, it would change, but in another way. The, the collapse of the wave function was unpredictable. It seems that it was random. And this was an idea that Albert Einstein hated. He, he, he didn't like the idea of a, determinist, of a probabilistic universe. He considered that God doesn't play dice. To which uh, Niels Bohr famously replied, Einstein, stop telling God what to do. <laughs> <laughs> but it really seemed... Now, uh, Einstein had some possible explanations. Like he involved some hidden variables. But recent experiments have disproven Einstein. So it really seems that our universe, at its at the low scales, is probabilistic, random. Also, most physicists would say. But they may be confusing the concept of unpredictability with the concept of random. Recently, there have been some, in the 1980s, there have been some new approaches to this problem, which say that this apparent collapse, this apparent unpredictable collapse of the wave function, is actually the result of Schrodinger's equation applied to a huge number of particles, and that this system was chaotic, was unpredictable, but for chaotic reasons. And that the Schrodinger equation was the only equation that rule the motions of these fundamental waves. This theory brings back to the deterministic case. It's known as the theory of decoherence. It's an important idea because it agrees with one other law of physics, which is the law of conservation of information, which really seems to be true. And this is now, the theory of equivalence really is not totally is not accepted. It still has some flaws. It doesn't work perfectly. So we don't really know yet, but the idea that the world is profoundly deterministic is at least in agreement with uh, the law of conservation of information. Now, even then, we don't we know that today that uh, the quant that quantum mechanics is, cannot be the end of it. We, we know that it cannot describe gravity, so it, it is incomplete. And physicists have been searching for a theory that would explain everything, a theory of everything. It would also include gravity. Okay. Uh, now what's interesting is that John Conway here, a mathematician, a living mathematician once again, went in another direction. Instead of trying to guess the fundamental laws of physics, he tried to create his own universe, his own laws of physics, and to see what kind of complexity, what kind of structure can emerge from that. So Conway's game, it's called Conway's Game of Life. It's very simple. So you have an infinite uh, two-dimensional grid. And at each, well, not necessarily infinite, but you have a two-dimensional grid. and um, each cell here can be alive or dead. Okay, so some of them are alive, others are dead. And at each point of time, you apply a very simple rule. If a cell is uh, surrounded by 
uh, say this cell is surrounded by too many people, uh, living cells, then it dies. If a cell is surrounded by too few uh, living cells, then it, it dies. You have very basic laws. And what's extraordinary about this very simple laws is that when you consider structure which are 10, 20 cells long, this structure seems lifelike. They seem to be moving through space, or some of them even seem to be replicating. So it's this structure that appears, lifelike structures, that appears out of very simple rules. Now, okay, you might say, okay, but this is nowhere near the actual complexity of a human body, for instance. But that's not a fair comparison. Here we have only considered dozen stru uh, structures of dozen of cells. If you want to do the comparison, well, my body here is made of 10 to the 27 particles. So you need at least 10 to the 27 cells to do an actual comparison. Well, why, why, why restrict to 10 to the 27? You can consider a Google amount of cells. Now, what kind of structure can merge out of a Google amount? Google is 10 to the 100. What kind of structure can emerge if you take a Google amount of cells? But well, short answer is we have no idea because it's impossible to compute that. But it might be that out of a Google amount of cells, the structures that appear are just as the structure of our own universe. It might be that if you consider enough cells, a whole universe appears out of Conway's game of life. So it might be that these very simple laws are actually the fundamental laws of our own universe. Okay, you may, you may be thinking at this point, oh come on, he's going nuts. These are very simple laws we chose randomly, basically. What are the chances that these laws are the actual laws of our own existing universe? Well, maybe they are. Maybe they are. The question is, the key question is, is our universe a Turing machine? Is our universe something that is computing time after time? That is a, the result of computation. Because John Conway's Game of Life has been proven to be a universal Turing machine, which means that it can compute anything. In particular, it can compute our own universe if our universe is a Turing machine. And these may well be fundamental laws of our own universe. But obviously, the fundamental laws of our universe would be non-unique. Any, any universal Turing machine would be the fundamental laws of our own universe. This really raises the question of, well, there's non-unicity of the theory of everything. This is really what this says. There's probably non-unicity, even if our universe is not a Turing machine. So here we've talked about what's fundamental in mathematics. Uh, let's get now to what's very fundamental in mathematics. Okay, so category theory is considered by many as the most fundamental theory of mathematics. It was invented by Heidelberg.